What's going on guys? Coming back at you with another Google Sheets video. This time it's going to be about currency conversions. This function is very helpful when it comes to making portfolio trackers, but you're not just limited to that. Maybe you need to convert currencies for something else, math or money related. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the stock market, but I think the stock market's the best case uh, use case scenario, especially if you're following my channel. And with the ability to convert currencies like this, you could then incorporate it into really cool portfolio trackers like this one or this one or even cryptos. You can see right here, we got a little euro section. It's converting my dollars into euros. So you create all of these cool trackers here. Uh, but how do we do it? How do we convert to a different currency? Is it easy? Is it hard? It's honestly one of the easier functions. So this video is not going to be too long, thank God. But you can see what I have set up here. Not only a couple of stocks, their current price using good old Google Finance, and then their actual conversions into the euros. And you can see off to the side right here, here's some conversions. We got euro, Canadian dollar, and then the British pound. And these are all of the actual conversions using this function. I didn't punch it in manually. And just to make sure that the conversion's correct, let's jump over to Google. And you can see right here, one US dollar to euros, it equals 0.82 euros. And that's what we have here, 0.82. So it looks like the math checks out. We could check the other two, but I know they're right as well. Uh, so how do we do this? Again, very easy function. I'm gonna open up a new tab and we're just gonna recreate what I had right there. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the top part at least. So we got all of that. We could type in some stocks. Oh yeah, and before we even do that, just so you can see it is dynamic, let's change Microsoft to Apple. You can see both of these load. So how are we doing this? We're gonna go here, we'll type in Apple, PayPal, how about NVIDIA? Stick with three stocks for now. We all know how to pull price by now, so we're gonna do Google Finance. We're gonna pull that, hit enter, select, boom, there we go. We got our pricing. Throw in the dollar sign if we want. Now, how do we change it over to euro? Again, very easy function. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit equals, Google Finance again, open quotation. We're going to type in currency. Then we're going to do colon, type USD and EUR. And look, you could already see up here, it's saying, all right, you want to change it to 0.82 because one USD equals 0.82 euros. But that's not what we want. We, we want to change this price. So how do we do that? Well, all we have to do is then go back to our equation. So we got equals Google Finance, currency, USD, EUR. Multiply that by this cell, hit enter, and boom, there we go. So $126.85, which is the current price of Apple as I'm recording this, is equal to 104 euros. Let's jump over here just to check our work. And you can see I already have it plugged in. $126.85 says it equals about 104 euros. And that's pretty spot on. We're maybe two cents off, but that's good enough. And then we could drag that down and it upstates these prices, but you may notice, hold on, why is there a dollar sign in front of it? It's one thing that Google doesn't do. It doesn't understand, oh, this is the Euro, so that's the wrong symbol, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So we would actually have to manually change our format like that. So there we go. And just so you guys can see where I got that, right up here, more formats, one, two, three. You go down to, look, we got the British pound, we got Euro, we got Chinese Yen. We go to more formats, more currencies. Chances are you're gonna find your currency in this long list of currencies. So then you could figure out, you could have exactly what symbol you need. So now we're not done yet because we could get a little more complex here. And this is what I mean. If we go back to this one, this, is all dynamic through this cell right here. If I change this cell to say GBP and then hit 
enter, all of this updates. Obviously, the currency is, the symbol is wrong, like I just explained. So we're going to change it just to plain text. And we'll do that. But this just all changed to GBP. And then we'll go back to Euro. Hit enter. We'll go to rupees, which I think is INR. Yep, look at that. So that's rupees, uh, CAD. There we go. So how are we doing this? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's go back to our little example sheet. I'm going to get rid of these symbols. And we'll reduce this so there's not too many decimal places. So this is what we have to do. We've got to tweak our formula, and it's not that hard. We're going to go back to USD, EUR. We're going to get rid of EUR. We're going to go on the outside of our parentheses. And what we want to do is hit uh, outside of quotation, not parentheses. We're going to hit the end. Then we're going to do dollar sign. And we want to pretty much write whatever our cell is in. So this cell, e EUR, right now is in D2. So we're going to do dollar sign D, dollar sign 2, should highlight like that. And then we're going to hit end again. Then we're going to do quotation, quotation, hit enter, and then we're going to drag this down. And now all of these are updated with that new formula, where if I go up to EUR and change this to say CAD, all that updates. So this, when you apply this, you can get into more advanced stuff, and eventually you can make something like this with a little drop down, and you can convert everything. So everything just converted to euros. Obviously, the dollar sign is wrong. I'd have to change that. But all the prices can adjust that way. And you can really start to create complex trackers like this with this rather simple function. Just to show you guys over here, this is euro, Canadian dollar, and British pound, as you can see up there. But besides that, I mean, there's, again, there's not much to it. You could start to add more stocks. You just drag that down and then this will update like that. Uh, the only other thing that I would say that you may want to add to your equation is in the very beginning, do the good old if is blank. Click on that cell, leave it blank. If not, then we want the equation. And that's so you could take this and drag it all the way down. And we could do the same for this. So I'm just going to copy this right here. Hit enter. And we want that in front of that. Hit enter. Drag this down. And now the equation is already locked in. You can see. The equation is in all of these cells, even though I don't have anything in it. So as I add my stock, say now I buy Microsoft, then everything will update like that. You don't have to worry about plugging it in uh, manually or dragging it down. It's already all in these. So Microsoft, how about Google? Hit enter, boom, there we go. But guys, that is it rather easy video. If you liked this video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe to my channel. I post content every single week teaching you guys about the stock market and teach you guys how to make really cool portfolio trackers or use Google Finance or Google Sheets, you name it. But that's all I got for you guys. And as always, I will see you in the next one.